Hey, what's up guys? This is Mario back again with another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about plug power stock or plug stock. The reason why is because of the recent uh, press release. Uh, they're actually going to reinstate their 2018, 2019, and 2020 quarterly financial statements. Uh, market freaked out, investors freaked out, and they sold out a uh, plug stock. It's actually down over 20%. But I really think this represents a really, really good buying opportunity. And it's really not just me. There's other analysts that think that as well. I'm going to go over some fundamental analysis. I'm going to go over the press release and what exactly was going to change or what, what, what are they changing and all that kind of detail. I'm also going to go over the technical analysis, what levels I'm looking at, where I actually bought and where I'm looking to buy more if it pulls back in those levels. So I'm going to go over fundamental analysis and technical analysis. And also, actually, I'm going to cover what JP Morgan, a tier one bank, thinks about plug power stock. Now, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe down below on this YouTube channel. Let me know what you guys think about plug power and the renewable energy sector. Uh, hey, let me share my screen and let's get started, okay? So what I'm going to do first, guys, I am going to share my screen, my Weeble account. Uh, as you guys can see, this is the uh, one-year chart of plug power. Uh, I'm going to put the moving averages. If you can look at the moving averages, these moving averages pretty much represents a trend. And it's been trending really, really nicely. And then we had this recent sell-off. Now, some of this sell-off did happen because of the overall market. The NASDAQ took a hit. But the last couple of days, especially the last three days, we, uh, he had an over 20% pullback because of this press release. So now it's testing the, uh, the 120 move, moving average. Uh, and you guys can see in the first time it bounced off, the second time it bounced off again. We'll see if this is gonna hold. Uh, now in terms of other technical analysis, I am also looking at these levels. So I also really like this level right here. Uh, 37 to me looks like a very, very important support level. Um, actually, let me get a horizontal line. My bad guys, uh, let me see, make sure I got the correct line. Uh, all right, there you go, horizontal line right here. So this line, this area right here, this like a 38 line or 37 line to me, it sounds like it may hold. Uh, if you guys can see there's like a little gap, it already filled the gap. Another level that I'm looking at is actually uh, around that 30 level right here. Actually, let me add another line right here. Uh, let's see where you are. There you are. So a 30 as well. So I like the 37 line as well as 30. I actually already bought some here around the 37 line. I'm, I'm using my, my uh, Cash App account. I do currently use both the Cash App as well as Weeble to buy stocks. I did use a Cash App account on this one just because it allows me to do fractional share buying. Uh, if you guys want a, a broker, looking for a broker, I do have links down below in the description, guys, where you guys will get fifteen per, uh, five dollars if you uh, download the Cash App or or two free stocks if you download the uh, Weibo account uh, app. So I do have the links down below. So again, uh, thirty seven and thirty are levels that I'm looking at. I already bought some today uh, on this dip and plug. I'm also I also looking at thirty. If it goes there, I'm gonna buy some more. So. Uh, the tentacle lasso looks pretty good. Uh, going over other tentacles, uh, and I'm going to kind of cover that as well. Let me see other tentacles that I think are very important. Let's see. We have this. We got, let me see what other stuff that I like. Okay, here we go. So we got the moving averages. So it's testing the moving averages, testing a very important level around 37. Uh, let's look at the Bollinger Bands as well. It's definitely testing the, the bottom side of the Bollinger Bulger area, which indicates again oversold status on the MACD as well. We are looking at the MACD, looks like the uh, the the reversal or, or the convergence of the MACD, which kind of indicates there might be a trend reversal. If you guys notice this, when these uh, this uh, orange line crossed below the blue line, we had a trend reversal, and you guys can see it in the chart. And now the orange line is crossing above the blue line. So it may indicate that we may have a reversal again, not a guarantee. It's just an indicator that kind of just shows you that it may happen, guys. Uh, so I also like the uh, RSI relative strength. It's pretty much uh, already at the, the lows. The last time it was this low was uh, pretty much here. I think yeah, we were talking about it here, like October 29. Uh, it was around 30s. Uh, 
yeah, pretty much around yeah, 30, 30 or forties, uh, or actually let me kind of go there. There you go. There you go. That, that makes sense better. So the last time it was around these levels was actually on March 16, 2020. Uh, and the RSI was around 39, uh, actually more like 30. There you, there you go, 30. And right now RSI is around uh, 36. So it's definitely at the low end. So I think this may indicate there might be a reversal uh, in, in terms of like exhaustion of, of sellers and there might be a dip buy opportunity. Again, these are just the tentacles. Nothing's guaranteed, guys, with this kind of stuff. It's all based on technical analysis. And again, uh, this stuff uh, could also keep selling. But so far, I do like the indicators. Now, let's go over the fundamental analysis, guys, and why it's so important. Because without the fundamental analysis, this is what really makes uh, you know a, a, a company really move. You know, because institutional investors they are looking at a uh, fundamental analysis. That's for them. That's the most important thing: fundamental analysis. So. I'm gonna go over the press release. So this is the press release uh, that happened on March 16. That made all this stock took a took a big dive. Uh, and again, it says plug power to restate previously issued financial statements. Now, the most important thing that already stuck out to me right away when I read this uh, press release was right here. So no expected impact on cash position, business operations, or econom economics of commercial arrangements. And this is huge, guys, because uh, when it comes down to it, guys, um, it looks like it just some accounting stuff that they have to change or fix, but none of the, the, uh, the, uh, the partnerships they've made, especially Ren Renu, uh, a car manufacturer that owns Nissan, uh, which is a huge, huge partnership with, uh, with Renu Group, Renu and, uh, and uh, Plug Power. Uh, so none of that is going to change. None of the cash position is going to change and none of the business operation. It's more of accounting stuff that is going to change. Now let's go over detail what some of the stuff is going to change. So it looks like what they're going to, they're going to change. Well, actually, let me kind of read this really quickly. In consultation with KPMG, the company independent registered public accounting firm management and the audit committee of Plug Powers board directors determined that the company's prior period financial statements need to be reinstated due to errors in accounting primarily related to several non-cash items, which is huge, guys. So it's more of accounting stuff now. So these are some of the things. The, it looks like the, the, the reported book value, right of use assets and related to financial obligations or finance obligations, loss accruals for certain service contracts, the impairment of certain long-lived assets, and the classification of certain costs resulting in a decrease in research and development expenses and corresponding increase in cost of revenue. So it looks like those are things that are going to change now. So none of the cash is going to change <clears throat> mostly like accounting stuff. Um, and let's, 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 let's kind of go over what some of the analysts think, by the way, and what some of the people think now. Well, this is an article from uh, the Motley uh, Fool. Uh, and pretty much it says that the plug power uh, will reinstate previously released uh, financial statements, 2018, 2019. Uh, so let's see what else. Uh, in news release, uh, plug, uh, plug is stated the county errors are primarily related to non-cash item. We, we pretty much talked about already. So, uh, so pretty much uh, plug power has yet to be profitable and investors have bid up shares lately, uh, partly on management's guidance of it for his renewable energy. And again, it's part of the renewable energy sector. And this is the reason why I'm still bullish on plug power because the Biden administration, a democratic administration just took the White House and also they control the Congress. They control the Senate, they control uh, the House of Representatives and they are renewable energy friendly. So I think a lot of new bills may benefit this company, especially infrastructure bills. Um, now, so any account issues going to damage some of the uh, trust of the future of the guidance, in the most recent fourth quarter earnings, plug gross billings increased 42.5% 2020 versus 2019. The company reported a net loss of 47, 475 million for the quarter. Much of what the result of a negative revenue being recorded from non-cash charges related to the accelerated vesting of customers remaining warrants. So pretty much the big deal why investors sold is because, because of the county changes, some investors believe that the, the, the could have been a bigger loss for the quarter, uh, especially when it comes down to the vesting of customers remaining warrants. 
And that could affect some of their earnings per, per, per share and things like that that they reported previously. So that's what they're really, really afraid, afraid of. But sorry about that. But let's talk about, I guess, what other analysts think um, and are, what other articles say. So in this one, we have uh, is plug power a buy following financial statement fiasco? Um, so let's kind of talk about, let's kind of go over that really quickly. So here, here we have, let's see. So I want to kind of go over some of the stuff here. So on Tuesday, the hydrogen fuel cell specialist said it will have to refile its fiscal 2018, 2019 financial statements. Um, let's kind of go over what some of the analysts say. Here it is. So understandably, investors didn't like the news. Of course, they didn't like it. Sending shares down in this uh, subsequent session. Well, Oppenheimer analysts, now this is one of the analysts from Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, Colin Rush expects the stock to come under pressure. The analyst takes a more measured approach. And this is what he says. We understand the account and trimming of his lease and service agreements are at the root of the issue. We have seen the need for similar reinstatements from other companies in, other, in our coverage as the standards have evolved for such transactions. So this is something that is not new, guys. This type of reinstatement has happened in other, com in other companies. And this is according to the analyst uh, from Oppenheimer, Colin, Colin Rush, uh, which is good. Now, he's a five-star analyst. Now, we will expect shares to trade off on the news and have a modest overhang until the issue is resolved. We remain constructive on plugged growth, strategic position, and the strength of his balance sheet to help facilitate growth. So that's very, very, very important. Now, overall, Plug has made no changes to his gross billing estimates. The company will still anticipate gross billings of $475 million in 2021, $750 million in 2022, and $1.7 billion by 2024. Uh, so this is important, very, very important. To this end, Rush, again, Colin Rush, the Oppenheimer analyst, reiterates an outperformed buy rating on Plug along with a 62 price target. Investors are looking for an upside of 67% uh, if, if Russia's forecasts play out. So that is huge. So according to this article, this uh, analyst uh, from Oppenheimer still likes plug power. Again, it looks like reinstatement of financial statements uh, is common. It's happened to other companies and they've experienced that. So there's nothing to worry, like big thing, anything to, uh, to kind of really, really worry about in terms of any fraud. Um, and I want to kind of read another article because of that. Now, Plug, plug power, the latest pullback represents a buying opportunity, say some of the analysts. There's another article. And what I want to cover here in this article is, is, this, is this right here. So uh, there is pretty much, uh, where is it? Uh, okay, here it is. Plug Auditor. So the auditor, the accounting firm who's auditing Plug's uh, financial statements is KPMG, has not reported any issues related to misconduct by the company and Southern puts and, and, and Souther, Souther, the, the uh, KPMG, uh, I guess, person, or actually uh, this might be the CEO, puts the errors down to company leases, uh, power uh, purchase agreements, business, and primarily related to his Walmart dealings. So it looks like a lot of the stuff is related to uh, some of the leases. Uh, and again, KPMG has not found any misconduct. So any fraud, anything wrong with it. So again, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer analysts also said that, hey, they've seen this happen to other companies, so there's nothing to kind of worry about. This happens. Uh, and again, no misconduct by KPMG, their, their, uh, their accounting firm. So that is good news. So I'm going to read another uh, article by uh, the Motley Flu, Motley Flu, excuse me. Why plug power stock continues to tumble today? Uh, we kind of already know uh, some of the stuff why it tumbled in the first place. So I want to kind of go over so what analysts think overall, what the overall analysts think. So this is what, what they say. So analysts are split on how investors should react to Plug's big drop. Yesterday, investment bank Truist withdrew its buy rating on Plug stock. So it looks like some of them have withdrawn uh, its, its buy rating. And Craig Hollum cuts his price target nearly in half. But Cohen, B. Riley, and Roth Capital all call the sell-off a buying opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> so it looks like there are some analysts who kind of are not sure what's going to happen, but to me, it looks like more analysts are, uh, are thinking about a buy opportunity, uh, with Riley B calling with B Riley calling the reinstatement accounting noise. So this, he's pretty much saying it's accounting noise is not really like a huge deal. Again, no misconduct by KPMG. 
Uh, so, uh, so pretty much that's what they're saying. So pretty much today for analysts, Concord Unity this time made the buying opportunity argument, insisting that Plug seems to, to be just switching around classifications of assets on his balance sheet and that the earnings restatement won't really affect the company's business or prospects. This is huge, guys. And that's what I'm saying, guys. So to me, this does represent a buying opportunity and plug. Now, what I'm going to go over is a, a, a Finvis chart of uh, some of the other fundamentals that I want to kind of cover, especially what analysts think. Uh, so if you look at some of the, uh, some of the stuff um, in terms of the, the most important analysts to me, which is a tier one bank analyst, a tier one bank analyst are pretty much banks are highly trusted. Uh, they have a uh, high ratings amongst uh, uh, other uh, uh, institutions and companies and things like that. A lot of investors look at these analysts, especially tier one and JP Morgan is one of them in terms of how to make their investment decisions. So the most recent um, analyst report by tier one, JP Morgan this year in 2020 was March 1st. And this is what they pretty much said. So pretty much JP Morgan upgraded plug uh, power or plug stock. Uh, from a neutral to an overweight with a price target of 65, which is huge, guys. Price target of 65. Uh, right now, going back to the um, going back to the chart, right now, uh, plug power is uh, or plug stock is trading at around 36. So 65, it, it pretty much is, is over here. So it's almost like uh, almost uh, almost a, a, almost a double. Uh, over 50% or almost like a 80, 90% uh, upside if they were to, if, if plug stock were to hit the uh, JP Moore analyst uh, uh, target. So there's a huge opportunity uh, in terms of uh, buying this dip, in my opinion. Uh, so let me know what you guys think, guys. This is pretty much how I want to end this call. Again, I am just, uh, uh, these videos are for learning entertainment purposes only, but I want to know what you guys think about plug stock. Uh, let me know on the YouTube comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below in the YouTube comments. Hopefully you're going to learn something from this video. Again, I just covered the, the fundamental analysis about plug power, the technical analysis, and why I believe it is to me a buying opportunity. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's really kind of going over some very technical support areas. Uh, so right now it's trading in very technical support areas. So hopefully that would hold. If not, I am looking at the 30 level to buy even more, a little bit more of the dip. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe down below. You guys will hear from me soon. Take care, guys.